Hi guys, so welcome to Mitch Linking live on Facebook. So what we're going to do today is take a look at a few products. Um, firstly Pure, which is our paint cleaner. You've then got Titan, which is our high gloss sealant, as you can see here. And then last but not least, we've got one of our luxury waxes called Ivory. So that's Ivory there. If you've got any questions at all, I know that most of you will be at work. Um, but if you've got any questions, just leave them in the comment section. And as and when we change the camera angle and such like, I'll check the, the uh, check the phone just to see what the questions are and try my best to answer them. So, what we're going to do first of all to start off with is grab some quick detailer. Um, this is just simply a quick detail and spray and all I want to do, I've recently washed the car so I'm just going to take some of the pollen and such like of the paint. Just always make sure obviously that the car is clean um, before you start doing any paint cleaning or, or sealants and such like. On this occasion it's just been sitting out in the car park for a few hours so I just thought I'd give it a quick once over. Easiest thing to do when you're quick detailing guys is just flip the cloth even if you can't see anything it just saves as you can hear there are birds around and um, we're under a tree here as well so it just saves any mistakes happening at all. This is our Highlander cloth so it's quite flush I typically use this just for drying the car or as you see here just quick detailing as well. Quick detailing is a fantastic product, it's really easy to use, it will impart an instant shine onto the paint. Brilliant if you're at shows, if you've maybe driven there um, and you just want to bring the car back up to how it was. Or again the same thing as I'm using it for here. You've maybe washed the car, you've had to go away and do something and then you come back and you need to, you don't want to start a fresh, basically. Um, so, what we're going to start off with is the yellow pad. So as you can see, it's just a medium firmness, so this would be a polishing pad. The reason I want to use a polishing pad is we haven't used pure on this paint for a few months now on this side of the car now. Um, so I'm not too sure what we'll be faced with and the best thing is you want to just have a little bit of cut to get through any of the ingrained organic matter, any grime, that type of thing. Just make sure it's on. And then choose the battery with the most amount of charge, which is this one. So this is the DeWalt BA, uh, those of you that have been watching the videos recently have probably seen this. I've taken the handle off just because I find the vibration through the rubber much more uh, easier to deal with. It's not a machine that gives you lots of vibration but if you're using it with a plastic handle obviously there isn't any buffer whereas the rubber um, typically has vibration it can dull the sensitivity, so to speak. So, speed. A um, couple of questions on that last time. So I'll probably start about three and a half thousand. It's quite good if you've just got a, a table that you can use of any sort. Obviously the cordless machines are slightly heavier than your corded stuff just because of that battery. I'm just going to go and get the keys for the alarm because I think it's just about to go off as you can see <laughs> it's flashing so stay with me I'll take you up the stairs to get the, the keys I should have put the alarm off before I started this um, I think that I'm up the stairs around the factory 
This is the, the warrior kit as well guys, that's my own keys there so you can get 45% off the warrior kit just now if you are interested. This is probably why the alarm's going off because the keys are so close. And then we'll go back inside. I'll just set the keys next to the car and it will automatically lock etc. Right, flip it round. There we go, perfect. Okay, so take your pure, give it a shake, and then all you're doing here is just applying some pure to the pad. Now what we'll do, um, we'll start off at this side and work down. So just spread some of the polish across the panel that you're going to be working on. And all we're doing is we're not so much working the, po the product in as an abrasive, but we will be working the product in to the extent just because I want to deep clean the paint. So, three and a half thousand revs, pad flat to the, the panel. Sorry guys, I <laughs> wanted to show you something there. So, one of the tips to not getting any splatter is just tilt the machine ever so slightly in the direction that you're going. Not enough that you're, you're at an angle like this, but you're maybe about five degrees or so off the paint and that will stop the splatter. There's just a hairline scratch here and I'm just wanting to take the edge off it ever so slightly. So I'm just going to turn this up to 5,000. seeing how hot the panel is, you obviously want to back off if you, it's too hot. A very basic way of checking this is just with the back of your hand. If you put it on there and you can't hold it um, for more than a five or six seconds, then the panel's too warm. Just take the machine off, give it a break for a few minutes, and then you can go back to it. So, I'm happy enough with that. Pure isn't an out and out abrasive polish, so to speak. There are micro abrasives in there that will just take the edge off your wash marring and things like that, especially when you use it with a machine. So back down to about three and a half and we get to the lower sections now. This gives you an idea of what a few months of grime on the paint actually looks like. So obviously our original colour and then just with a few passes over the paint. You'll already hopefully see the difference. Logged in from the USA, nice one, whereabouts are you Andrew? Do share. Is it sunny? <laughs> um, you might be able to see the richer red now more glossy in this section. 
and that is just down to the paint being cleaner. Once this is obviously still hazed or hazing, so once we remove this, I'll come back. So let's get that off. You just want to leave it on for a few minutes. Um, just to let it fully cool haze. So just a finger swipe. That should, I'll bring the camera in. Guys, let's take it off. The tripod and hopefully. Yeah, do you see that? So that's kind of what you're looking for is just... And there's the swipe test, right there. And that's what you're looking for, it's just that slight hazing. Okay. So what we'll do for this next one is we'll just change the camera slightly, there we go. Right, so this is really easy to take off, just plush or shorter than upside, whatever you prefer. Um, there is no grabbiness from this product whatsoever, and you shouldn't be getting any dusting either. If you are getting dusting from this, you've just worked it too long, that's all. It's not the worst crime in the world, we're all... But yeah, this looks amazing. This paint comes up really well um, as well. This is 2014. Uh, so it's seen a bit of action. And then all we'll do now is this side now, I can already see. Yeah, I can catch that with my fingernail. So Pure's probably not the product that will even take the edge off this. You would need to use something like a number three polish for a scratch like this. This has just been maybe at this low level. It could be anything from a bag or possibly a hedgerow, something like that. And it's been enough. But Mercedes clear coat's quite tough. Um, so it's probably been something that's relatively sharp. Right, so because the pad is already loaded, ideally we'll swap them over, but the other pads are in there. And, um, we want to just keep this video rolling. So, what we're going to do is same process again. Just pop it on to the paint and add flat to the paint as well. I should learn one lesson. So, pad flat to the paint, but not like I did there, that's too much pressure. And with the soft start, just pull the trigger gently. just give you pretty much more of the same again you get an idea of how much grime you're really taking off and give you another look so it just ruby a ruby red right okay you can work on that Andy you let me know a fragrance scent that tickles your fancy so you can see as you're working the product pure cures quite quickly 
it's really easy to apply, really easy to remove. Um, as you can see, we'll just do the swipe test and that's ready to come off. So I'll just show you how easy this is to remove. Nice and close. There isn't any hiding with these uh, microphones, these are clip in ones, so you can tell by my breathing how easy it is to remove. I'm not putting a lot of, exerting a lot of pressure on the cloth either. I'm just really taking it off. Um, as easy as that. The nice thing about Pure is it shows you exactly what you're working with. And you've got that deep cleaning effect which is difficult to get elsewhere. So hopefully you can now see the gloss, the the um, sun has just went behind the clouds. But you can see a nice wetness in the gloss appearing on the doors as well. So what we're going to do now is get on to Titan. Titan is a really fast product to apply. I'll show you how quickly you can do this. Um, I was working pure slightly longer than what I would normally do just simply because the paint hadn't been cured in a while. So for this one, I'll just bring you over to the table and show you what we're what I'm doing. So there you go. So we're just going to take this pad off, that will go in the bucket to get cleaned. And then again just centre your pad. These are um, very soft, these are finishing pads so they are very very soft. Titan is non-abrasive in any way whatsoever. So you're just looking for an out and out finishing pad. and just remember give the pad a prime with quick detailer just so that there's no dry foam touching the paint and we'll go for the wide angle on this one I'm just going to work the two doors guys because there's the um, trolleys at the other side so just give you an idea All we're going to do is just spread the product, that's it, we're not working this in at all. I'll turn this up to four and a half. As I said, we are close to the airport, so you're just about to get one of uh, the nation's finest helicopters pass over. Police helicopter coming in, it's just yeah, it's got clearance to land, so it's fine, it's going over. Sometimes it will just literally sit above the factory until it gets clearance, but it is going in. So So that's it guys, that's how to do it. Just apply the Titan, give it a few minutes to cure. You'll tend to find because the dual action um, puts on such a thin layer 
that will cure very quickly. So, we'll get another cloth um, and just remove this thing. one of the Olympians and this one we'll just use the more plush side. I tend to use the plush side for the paint cleaners, the polishes and the sealants and then I use the less plush side for the waxes. There you go, that is looking very nice indeed. Ah, California, lovely. Give it a few months, Andrew, and you could catch the Monterey Car Week. It's always worth a, a look. That's the start of Pebble Beach, the biggest, uh, probably oldest concourse event in the world. Um, we've had quite a few entrants to that over the past while a few winners as well in certain classes. Right, so what we're going to do now guys is we're going to get on to the wax. So let me show you exactly how to get the wax onto your pad. So again, once the pad's been used, I just tend to get it off and stick it in the, the wash. This one's probably one of the oldest pads that I've got, and as you can see, it's done. So that'll be for the bin. And then we've got our brand new pad. First step is spritz of quick retailer. You can obviously apply this by hand. Most people apply it by hand, but just... We've got the DA out, so why not give it a go? You don't really need that much and it's just a fingernail. It's, this is such a nice wax. It's a very... It's a very specific... Um, what would you call that? Texture. So it's the closest to... It's almost got this buttery-like texture to it. with, I don't know how you describe this, almost like honey as well, there's a real, um, and that's just the ingredient, so ivory obviously is, or maybe not obviously, but it's part of our luxury lineup. this wax will be available to purchase just after the video, so keep your eyes gleamed on the website, so that's it, as simple as that, and then all we'll do guys is just, we'll go for this panel here and the same process as if you're hand waxing, just put some across the panel and then to be honest with you, you get the most or the, the most uniform layer, the thinnest layer with the machine, then by applicator pad and very lastly by hand, you might have seen the hand application video that I did on Saturday just to demonstrate how much product you actually use and in most cases how much over application is on the paint as well so we're all about um, you know telling you the right thing um, but in my opinion the, the hand application is merely if you're maybe at shows or you're maybe doing YouTube videos, that type of thing. The practicalities of it, in my mind, from a business point of view, especially if you're a professional detailer, it doesn't really make any sense because you're using a lot of product. And to get the wax off, any wax that you hand apply can be more difficult because you there's essentially too much product on the paint as well. So.
this is an even thinner layer than what Titan would be. Yeah, um, we, we send a lot of products to the US. Um, and you're right, it is a, certainly a different setup in the States. You've got your, your bigger brands over there um, that, that seem to... That probably the issue that most smaller brands face would be logistical in terms of trying to cover the US and using ground shipment and air. It's actually cheaper for us in some, case, in, in some cases to send to the US than it is for our... Um, partners within the US to send to someone in a different state, so it's, it's an entry, it's, it's different, um, but certainly we're very lucky to have a, a, a lot of, of US customers um, all after the same, we're all after the same thing, we all want that holy grail, the, the gloss, the wetness. So let's have a look at the application, as you can see there, that's exactly what you're looking for, just almost like a hologram is really what you're looking for on the wax side so you might be able to see that just above the handle that's exactly the amount of wax that you want to apply um, don't want to be putting on any more than that and that's really all you want to be seeing on the paint anything more i mean even at that anything more will make will be more difficult to cure it will, it will take longer and it won't actually add anything to the paint because Anything that isn't in direct contact with the paint just comes off. So that's all about conservation of product use, I guess. We've got a little spider that's trying to make this. That's always a good sign, I find, if the insects are drawn to your paint, it must be very shiny. As you can see, that small amount of wax is probably still enough to do the rear quarter of the front wing. So it shows you with a, a DA or by hand how little wax you actually use. From, from this jar here, from this jar here, you should get about 50 odd layers of wax on a standard size car, something like this. An Audi, this is a CLS, but an Audi A4. Mercedes um, CLS or C-Class, uh, not a huge difference in it, um, Jagged E-Pace, I think Alf Mill just brought out a car called, is it Tonal? Um, so something like that, or the Golf, Golf GTIs, obviously very popular cars, five doors, you get a wee bit more out of the jar there. Now, in terms of curing, this is one of our luxury waxes and it has a high oil content. The biggest difference with our luxury waxes versus the core waxes is the amount of natural ingredients. So with the lights of ivory there are no petrochemicals in this wax at all. And one of the interesting conversations I had with a customer recently, one of the reasons you can near enough guarantee that a wax has petrochemical content is if it has a very sweet fragrance because sweet fragrances are the only thing that covers up your petrochemicals um, whereas and obviously there will be waxes that have you know there's a big big market now for that end um, but once you're getting up to the luxury if you get a, a sweeter fragrance and if the wax cures very quickly you can pretty be much guaranteed there is some kind of petrochemical or kerosene and in my mind if you're up at that sort of price point you really shouldn't have um, petrochemicals in there there's no real need requirement for them there are better um, there are much better oils ingredients that you can get obviously they're more expensive they are more difficult to get they're a lot more difficult to to blend with to make the blend because it's natural you 
it's um, it's more of an art really when you're up at, the, at this level. So the likes of ivory, lily, um, serpent, Jordan, cardinal, uh, rana, elegance. We've got quite a few. So once you go over the three hundred pound mark, then the other one of the other things that we don't do with the luxury waxes unless we're asked is we don't sell them on a carnauba percentage simply because for ivory for instance is a great example of this carnauba wax is actually the cheapest ingredient that i use in ivory it's still t1 it's still the the best and um, t1 is just simply pharmaceutical so it means t one's the most processed carnauba wax flake um, that you can get i don't know if we've what we do guys, when we're letting this cure, I'll give you a wee insight to this because it's important to talk about this because there is slightly mis misleading at times so I'll just make sure we've not got any recipes lying about <laughs> um, yeah, we're all clear so this is T1 as you can see here and the flake quality Let's take some. What we're going to do is take some and we'll get some a sheet of paper or a bucket like would be something that's very white just so that we can. But this is quite an important point. So you get a few different grades of carnauba for the next video. <laughs> a biscuit. Make sure to get all my facts right here. Um, right, so all I'm going to do, guys, is just pour some of this from the bottom. On. Better to do this outside because it's natural light and it's got lighter. So our factory, as you know, has no windows. It's a more stable environment just for the products. Right, so there we go. So as you can see, the flakes are all different sizes. There isn't really a, a, a product, you know, that's essentially not what it's about. The T1, however, what we're looking for here, or what you're not seeing here is, you're not seeing any bugs, you know, you're not seeing any wings of flies, you're not seeing any stuff. Um, it's quite a, it's not as romantic a way as you think, the way that they harvest the flake off of the palm leaf. It's quite industrious, and um, there are quite a lot of chemicals involved in doing so. So when we're moving up to the luxury side of things, you will notice that the Kurnuba wax doesn't really play as big a role. I always liken it to, let's say, a, a Ferrari. Um, if you've got, the, the Kurnuba wax are the tyres, for instance. Your other stuff, you need the engine, you need the interior, you need the, the glass that they order, you need this, that, the next thing for it to be a Ferrari. If you're using, say, T3 Carnauba, say if you stick on 50 pound tires a corner, if they exist anymore, uh, you then put in, I don't know, a crate engine, something that Ferrari wouldn't use, then you're starting to come away from truly what a, a luxury wax is. And for us, the luxury wax is all about the ingredients. Obviously, the finish comes with it. If you're using good ingredients, that should be a given. The other thing that we don't do is we stay away from the synthetic ingredients with the luxury side. So you'll start to see a big reduction in the fragrances as well. So the fragrances will be natural. Um, I won't give that away because I know we're one of the few companies that, that, that do that. So I won't get too much into that side. But our blends on their own are highly unique. They are obviously our own blends. I make most of the waxes myself or Ruth or David within the company they're all made in-house right here in Paisley as you can see right next to that airport um, but yeah so for the, the T1 that's what colour it is there's the DeWalt that's good because DeWalt is a nice bright yellow so there you can see it's not white um, there is no if I phone our supplier and say can I have white but it doesn't exist there's no such thing um, if, if they've managed to if you are able to get hold of it it'll be bleached um, but the carnauba is already bleached, so it comes out. Carnauba is normally a very, very dark colour. It's essentially, it is a white, but it's, it's like a resinous colour. So if you know, if you've been out in a forest or whatever, and you see the resin coming out of pine, that's another topic. Um, then 
that's just a colour that, that T3 could be. And the T3, fun enough, is, is um, used for polish. It, it's just T1 is, is, is a better quality, you get less bits in it. Um, it's, it's essentially more processed, that's what T1 is. So it's arguably the best quality. It's food grade, pharmaceutical grade is the, the grade that we purchase just because obviously it's going into wax and I don't want anything to be in that box. Another thing that's quite interesting would be the beeswax. So this is another thing just to give you an idea of um, the variances in colour, even though they're advertised as yellow. So you can actually see here. It depends on the process and I try and buy UK beeswax just again beeswax is quite an easy thing to get hold of and I don't really fancy shipping it halfway around the world just to essentially get the same stuff plus organic as well if you can it's always better so as you can see this is all yellow but different types depends on the processor as well um, so you've got pellets and then you've got these larger you've got nibs in there as well um, they essentially are all the same type of thing but so that's really why we don't focus too much on the T1 we have a lot of customers especially overseas that are used to be they're maybe used to being marketed in that way that certain T1 levels would be superior now as some of you might know we have a wax called Ameliorate uh, which is a 72% T1 Kurnuba wax and it's about a hundred pounds. Now Lily on the other hand, which is a lower T1 content, that's about 600 pounds. The big difference here is the ingredients of Lily are far superior. So much more expensive. Our main carrier, for instance, after COVID and whatnot now, is about 16, between 13 and 16 times what it costs for the same petrochemical. Um, the, it's just, funnily enough, I, I started off only making non-petrochemical waxes. The petrochemical waxes are a relatively new thing to the range, mainly because in our old facility, um, we couldn't have the shutter door up as often. There was a lot of, it would be we're very lucky, the space that we have now, we own the car park outside, we're much more in control of our surroundings. So when we've got the shutter up now, we've also got um, aeration and just pre more protective ways of making the waxes as well. So with the petrochemicals, I had a slight sing what you call sensitivity to it. So just maybe a sort of lightheadedness, sore head, and that's another thing. Um, just because of the volume of waxes that we make, we are a very big producer of car waxes. It's our main main thing. Um, you're in touch with them all day, every day. So that was why we went for the luxury, but there has been changes that we've made that we've been able to obviously drive the, thank you very much for that order, we've been able to drive the price down on some of the entry level waxes, um, the sort of stuff around about the 20, 30 pounds mark, and obviously they are petrochemicals, but some of them do have oils in there as well. So, and again, it's there's neither a right or a wrong, we could have a customer I have one in mind right now, they own lavender and they also own a wax that we made for Detailing World some time ago. And they prefer the Detailing World wax just simply because they like the shorter curing time and that's it. The lavender is a much better wax, looks wise, but their thing is about the application. The petrochemical waxes for me, once the sun pops out, they're much more difficult. Um, they're not, they don't play as nice, whereas natural waxes, they actually benefit to being on the paint for longer. I think the record that I hold for a wax being on the paint as long as possible, it was undercover, etc. Um, it was about six or seven hours in the summer, and that was absolutely baking on. I wouldn't advise that for, <laughs> for your own car, but I just wanted to see what happened, because so often, obviously, the petrochemical stuff, it says do not use in direct sunlight, whereas the natural oils, they're naturally anti-UV, they're naturally hydrating, because remember your paint is porous at a microscopic level. So if you were to, this is why if you see, if you watch these crime shows where the cars get pulled out of lakes, 
and you see the, the paint is actually flaking off. I had a really interesting conversation years ago, I can't really name the company due to legal reasons, um, but a very, very big manufacturer of paint and uh, yeah, we'll keep it at that because the other thing might be too obvious. And that was what we were discussing is if I'm making these waxes with natural oil, are they actually feeding the paint on some level? And the answer to that was yes, because your paint is microscopically porous. Um, if you were to super wet the paint, so to speak, then it will start the process of delamination. It won't happen overnight, this is the thing, you know, it won't happen overnight. But I think this is why the luxury waxes look so good, because they actually penetrate through as your petroleum-based waxes they are designed to evaporate, so they evaporate off the surface, whereas you'll get a lot more ivory, for instance, you'll get a lot more wax on the paint. Um, yeah, definitely. I won't go too much into that, Andy, because um, <clears throat> that's something, a bit of a trade secret, but 100% the, the oils massively affect the difference. Now, it's easy for me, and I don't mean this in a big, a big headed way, um, just from a, an engineering point of view. I've now got a trained eye for that. So I can spot, and probably most people that are detailing their car often pick this up as well. I think it's just any job that you're involved in, any career, your eye starts to be trained to certain things. If you are a mechanic, for instance, you'll be able to tell certain things about a um, a car that I wouldn't or somebody else wouldn't just by hearing it run. So the minute, even just now when I'm watching Ivory, I'm watching the changes in the wax. Um, we need to be really specific when we create a wax or I need to be very specific. So what I do when I'm prototyping a wax, I get the A4 sheet of paper, normally a few of them, and write down every single characteristic of that wax that I see when I apply it, I remove it, if I leave it on, if I take it off early, all that type of thing, so that I fully understand what this wax is capable of, what this, what this blend does, essentially. Now, as you've correctly said, yes, the oils are very, very important. Um, we are very lucky that, I mean, it sounds ridiculous now, but we've probably got thousands, I've never counted them, um, I've not got to that stage yet, but I probably will one day. We've probably got thousands upon thousands of prototype recipes, recipes that we've brought out, limited editions. Um, so my understanding of the blends has grown so much over the years, and I understand what every single part of the wax does, why it does that, and that's why, rather than from a chemist point of view, I'm looking at it more as the engineering side of things, because that's really my gig, to be honest. I want to engineer a wax to do something perfectly in it. It's funny, when we first started the company, that was, it was the majority of requests that we got, so people would even get into the specifics of the beading. So we had a, a chap who absolutely loved tall beads. So I had to figure out from, and this was only natural stuff back then, what would give a tall bead, what would give a rounder bead, what would give a shorter bead, what kills the beading as well, because there's stuff that does that. Um, durability, and that was when I discovered that, obviously when you're making a natural wax, you can have loads of different ingredients, whereas a petrochemical wax, you have very few ingredients, and you can't really change that much because there aren't really many ingredients to change, whereas with the natural stuff, that's why you've got such an array of choice when you get up to the core waxes, simply because you've got so many different oils and various bits and pieces that go into it. Um, but you've got other stuff as well, you know, it's, it's, I just always liken it to a car because we're all car guys. The wax is the exact same as a car, so you need the tyres, you need the suspension, you need the engine, you need the steering, and then you can go down the Lotus route where you want to hone in on the, the steering. You can go down the AMG route where you just want it to be, uh, I can't use that word, very fast in a straight line and you know just a lot of noise and stuff like that. I'm sure they handle great, it's just 
my experience of them. Um, in the UK, is they're, they're extremely loud, loud cars now. Or you can go down the Brook side of things, you know. There's just so many different avenues you can take. And that's why we can keep on making different waxes. And there's even, unfortunately, there are times that when I'm looking for a certain ingredient, we can't get it. So there's stuff that we are buying in from local farmers, say, in Mexico. Just pick out any country. Um, and maybe their crop this year hasn't yielded that much. So the cosmetic industry will come first really for that type of stuff and then it will go filter down the range, pharmaceutical as well. Um, we had it in one of the places that we get stuff is a, through a broker is, um, is in Africa and their yield was quite low a couple of years back so we had to change the ingredient. So it happens and it essentially makes a version too because that new ingredient will be completely different. So as I'm gabbing away guys, I can actually see this wax is about ready to remove, so... But if you've got any questions like that, and I, I would more than happy to help you with the truth as well, you know, I always... It's why we've been going so long and why we're trusted by so many different people. And I know, you know, everyone says the same thing, you've got all these fancy cars on the website and um, that's just a trust thing. Obviously if somebody's bought a car that's, you know, the, the one back in the day was that 30 something, 35 million dollar Ferrari that we made the wax for, that was just down to trust. They just felt that the wax would be absolutely perfect for the paint. They liked the fact they could design their own wax and they liked the fact that it would be completely natural. Um, but the funny thing is, you know, we've got, what did we do? So a couple of years back, we did the, a few cars that were going over to Saudi. Um, and that was a kind of mid-range watch, you know, it was about 100 odd pounds. They just wanted a really wet finish. They weren't too fussed about the ingredients. And I said, look, you don't need to go up to, I would have said Serpine or Cardinal, Rory as well, um, but instead I said, well, we don't really have anything at that price point just now, but I can make it. So we essentially made a more toned down version of lavender, which you can do. Um, and again, as Andrew said, it's, it's about your, your ingredients there. So you could probably, with the way the weather is today, it's quite overcast. I would, if this wasn't a live video, I would probably be leaving this about half an hour to 45 minutes because it's still grabby on removal. Um, so if you are finding your wax is grabby on removal, it's probably not fully cured. So the easy thing there is just leave it another half an hour or so and come back to it. The biggest thing I say about the luxury waxes is don't rush them. Just let them you know, it's like anything that's a really good quality, your red wine, champagne, tequila, cars, you know, you can pick anything. They all take time. There's that famous quote about the Rolls Royce and the Toyota. Um, and that's just what it's about. It might take a little bit longer. And it also, it's therapeutic as well. You know, a lot of us, it's quite nice just to go out and tend to something. Um, just take a bit of a break. But yes, I would have left that about another half an hour more. Just to give it some time. As you can see, we've got a very active tree. <laughs> this dropping all its leaves on this car. Um, so what I would do normally is a swipe test. So you can see, this is a good, good thing to show you, an inconclusive, you always see the, the conclusive swipe test, but here is an inconclusive, or it's conclusive that it's not ready to, to come off. So swiping it, you can still see the products there. Now, what I'll do is, this shouldn't be the case, but just to give you this option, 
if you've left the wood for about 45 minutes and you're still getting that, chances are it's over applied. So you've got two options. You can just do what's called skimming. So skimming is just taking the cloth like this and just literally skimming the skin. So you're taking the, the top layer of skin off. And this is actually working with this. This wax quite nicely. Um, and then what you would do is leave that for about half an hour. Because now what you've got is the layer of wax that should have been on in the first place. So you've got that um, thinner layer. And it's, again, it's all about conserva conservative use of material. Because there's no point plastering the car with wax when you don't need it. Especially not with the luxury stuff. So there you go. You should just see a hologram. That's really what we're looking for. There's just a wee bit too much wax up at the top here. Um, but what I'm going to do, because we're coming to the end of the video, and I'm sure you guys have got your work to get back to, is I'm just going to one, two sprays with quick detailer, and this is just force drying it. A eh, force curing it, sorry. Ivory does look fantastic. So we originally made this for an exotic car collection. Uh, the customer wanted a really nice wet look. A lot of the cars were metallic, but yours doesn't have to be. And you might be able to see there's almost a colour difference between this one and this one. The cars never seen paint. Same material, so it's not like it's a plastic bumper or a rear quarter. So you should be able to see a slight colour difference. It's really apparent to me with the naked eye, these two sections here and here. And if we take it out. So there you go. That gives you an idea of just how easy it is to apply. Obviously, there's been a lot of chat, <laughs> a lot of chat in between, but how quickly? Yeah, see, you can see that right there. Went off just as we're walking around. You see that difference between the two, and that is the power of a natural wax. The other thing. The other thing that's worth mentioning just now is with the natural waxes the finish will actually improve over the next 24 to 36 hours because the natural wax will actually cure hard. It's very similar idea to if you've ever painted your walls or your wood or whatever in your house or outside whatever it might be. So the the wax is now curing hard afternoon. Tommy, how you doing? Um, so what you're getting now is you'll get that hardening and that will also improve the looks as well, the durability, etc. So you can see, hopefully you can see, thank you very much for that very kind order, you can see a definite colour difference. As I said, we've had this car from new, so it's never seen paint. Um, that's real. But very, very nice. You can certainly see that was some uh, Titan. Uh, We've been doing this car bit by bit. Um, let's get some, let's do some cheating. Yeah, anytime, Andrew, anytime at all. If you've got any questions about waxes or the sort of ins and outs of them, and obviously to make sure that you're, you're also getting a good deal as well. Um, it's... It's always good to to get a look at you know, the different options that are available. And it's like everything, guys. We might not produce every single product that you want. Um, or you might find that another company makes a better wheel cleaner or whatever it might be. It's just all about finding the products that work for you and that give you the best result. And this might be that, I mean, fun enough, it would be just spoke to a customer the other day about this. Um, 
So they might just be happy with Titan and stopping there. They might think, you know, I don't really need to do all this. This isn't the level of finish that I'm looking for or the amount of effort that I want to spend, which is absolutely fine. You know, it's, it's hobbies are like that. You'll have people that will go to the end of the world. You see it with trains, especially model trains. You'll see guys that have devoted near enough their whole house to their hobby. And um, they go to all the shows, they've got absolutely, you know, um, picture perfect, almost replicas of train stations, etc. And then on the opposite end of the scale, you've got four or five year old kids that are happy with their great grandfather's train set and they're just whipping it around the living room carpet, so, or floor or whatever it is. Um, so yeah, you, you just find something that works. Got a lot of customers that use, for instance, you'll use Titan and Seal. So that is the, Titan and Seal would be the twin. So if you really like Titan, add in Seal as your top up spray. If you really like Guard, add in Endurance. And if you like Diamond Seal, add in Glace. And we've got lots of people that that's what they'll pick. They'll pick a shampoo, a sealant, and a spray sealant and that's them, they're done. Um, and then we've got the opposite end, we just sent a warrior kit out there the other day and that customer went away with four different waxes and 47 detailing liquids. So they've essentially got the whole range of liquids and they've bought enough waxes to start their, essentially in their words, to start their collection. So, and we cater for everything and thankfully, if that is what you want to do, I've picked up enough knowledge over the years that we can keep it simple. Um, obviously you can add in clay bars and things like that, but if you want just a simple detailing regime, um, and if you do, this is, this is my advice if you want it. I would go for pure, because you want to get that paint as clean as possible. If you can get the paint nice and clean, then you're on to a winner straight away. Then get yourself cordless dual action because it's so much easier to use, you don't need to worry about the cable, you don't need to worry about plugging it in, all that type of thing. Get yourself one of them, get some finishing pads, some polishing pads, get a bottle of Titan and then choose what your spray sealant would be. If you want just a simple regime, that's what I would stick to. It will make car detailing fun again and there's a toy, you know, we all like a toy so the dual action is your toy. Um, so yeah, you've got to reward yourself with something now and again. So take care, the 45% sale ends on Friday as well, so make sure you get something for yourself before then. And I'll just stick the ivory on the website just now, so hopefully first come first serve, so whoever gets it first, congratulations. Thank you very much, any questions just leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Take care guys.